This is an international TV station says today. I'm Isabel Melo. Today's topic is Polish Polar Station in Horsens, Norway. Our correspondent is in Norway right now, so let's see what she's got for us. We're here outside the Polish Polar Station, situated on the northern shore of the Horsens Fjord, in the center of the South Spitsbergen National Park. Named after its founder, Stanisław Siedlecki, the station is a magnificent place located in the center of wild Arctic nature, where the polar bear reigns and the sparkling northern lights brighten the presence of the Polish scientists. But how did it happen that they came to this place? It all started in spring 1956. A reconnaissance group led by Stanisław Siedlecki, a Polish geologist, explorer and climber, searched the area for the future station site. They worked in Horsent. Finally, the Polish Polar Station was constructed in 1957 by a team of 10 scientists from the Polish Academy of Sciences, together with workers of other institutes. Initially, it was a winter base, established within the framework of the third International Geophysical Year. However, the station was renovated in 1978 and it has been in operation year-round since that time. Today, the Polish Polar Station in Horsent is a research base recognizable all over the world. In a minute, I'll be talking to the head of the station, Włodzimierz Sielski. Hello, Mr. Sielski. Can I ask you a few questions? Hello, yes, of course. Uh, what kind of research is done at the station? We focus on full-year research, research related to meteorology, the atmosphere and its phenomena, especially in relation to weather and weather forecasting. Geosteology, the monitoring of geophysical fields such as seismology, geomagnetism and atmospheric electricity, and permafrost. However, our main study objectives are concentrated on the evolution of the high Arctic environment because it influences climate changes. Do you cooperate with Norway? Do you have a good relationship? Of course, the cooperation has been very good since the very beginning. Each expedition leader visits the governor of Svalbard. We also visit him, especially during Christmas or Easter. The cooperation is very effective and mutual. I'd like to add that some part of the equipment which is at this station is assembled by the Norwegians and we operate it. So, consequently, the research findings are the result of our cooperation. What about the food issue? Um, the station is supplied with food once a year in June or July. In autumn, we, mar we are mainly provided with fruit and vegetables. Frankly speaking, the station is self-sufficient. During the summer, when there are about 50 people, including the permanent staff of 10 persons, we hire a professional cook. But during the winter months, there are usually 10 people, and then we cook ourselves. It is our duty to serve two meals a day. What was the most surprising thing when you first came here? Well, I was expecting it to be a lot colder and snow everywhere, but surprisingly, it was nothing like that. It wasn't that cold at all, it was very colorful, and everything <coughs> wasn't blossomed. Uh, what about the polar bears? Well, to be honest, you can see these animals almost all the time. Even looking through the window, you can see a polar bear. But you must remember, these are wild animals, so you have to carry a gun because you never know what may happen. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. Natalie Bloom, Science Today. Okay, thank you, Natalie, for taking us to Norway. That's it for today. If you want to see more, check our website.